Hey, so thanks for clicking on the video, you guys. Today, we're gonna to be talking about all-in-one coolers. I have a lot to cover, but specifically this video is on the Kraken X53 240 millimeter all-in-one cooler. And I'm gonna be running that up against the Deepcool Castle 240EX that I previously did a benchmark video on, as well as an install guide on. Now, Kraken, in my opinion, has done a phenomenal job with their all-in-one coolers, and I haven't got to test out all of them, but I'm definitely on my way to doing that. And this is the next step in the phase with the Kraken X53 at the price point of $129.99. I think it's the next step in the lineup of coolers moving from a 120 millimeter, like the M22, to the 240 millimeter. It's a lot of price for value, but what I really wanna test is how well does it stack up to other products out there. Let's waste no time and jump right into the performance values of the X53. I'm using the Ryzen 7 3700X in an NZXT H510i case. The room I am performing the tests in is controlled. My room temperature is 70 degrees Fahrenheit at all times for both the deep cool and the NZXT. I will first cover the performance of the Kraken X53 and then break down the unboxing and software then we will compare the results of the NZXT versus Deepcool. I have nine total benchmarks, a few games, some video slash photo editing, some video streaming like Hulu and YouTube, and then I threw in a classic Cinebench R20. Just in case you rock the performance hungry Chrome browser, I tested about 40 tabs open all on the Google search page. The Kraken would spike at times hitting 52 degrees Celsius, but mostly stayed very cool at a 36 degree idle, which is hardly as low as it can idle because I clocked it as low as 30 degrees Celsius with the one Chrome tab open, which was one of my tests or what I considered doing absolutely nothing. It did spike to 43 degrees, but it was really so it didn't damage the CPU from being so cool. This is where we kicked it up a notch and fired up Call of Duty Modern Warfare as this fast-paced, graphics-heavy game ramped up, the temps didn't seem to follow heavily. Although I did see the CPU hit 60 degrees after 10 to 15 minutes of gameplay, it would constantly drop back down, even as low as 50 degrees. Somehow, Fortnite barely seemed to phase the X53, clocked at 43 degrees on the low end and 54 on the high end, it barely broke a sweat when ramping up over 50% usage to the CPU. I was definitely a bit shocked, but it definitely is not a CPU or GPU heavy game. When it came to really testing the CPU, I figured a good run at Cinebench would give us real world usage for overclockers, video editors, and those alike. Even at 100% CPU usage that was pinned for long periods of time, I saw a max of 60 degrees and a low of 57. This of course was letting the CPU ramp to full usage before clocking those temps. So moving on to Premiere Pro, if you are a 4K video producer and are looking for some solid cooling, well let's be clear, the Kraken X53 is now my top performer for Cinebench and Premiere Pro. I watched a solid 5 minute 4K export tip the CPU usage between 98 to 100% and still kept the temps under 60 degrees. In fact, the Ryzen touched 58 degrees in the final minutes and mostly sat around 55 to 56. Just for a few kicks, I fired up Illustrator and scaled a vector image to 1000% to see what would happen. Not that I thought there would be a big spike, but it did seem to uptick the temps for my idol and hung around 50 to 51 degrees. What was a bit more surprising and probably a testament to the 3700X more than the cooler itself is that I decided to scale that image to a thousand percent while rendering a 4K video and well, the temps didn't really change from the render test. They hit a low of 54 and a high of 57. So the last thing I can imagine most people do that ramps up a CPU would be to be streaming from Chrome tabs and multiple tabs at the same time. So I went ahead and put up 10 different YouTube tabs and one Hulu tab and we never broke 54 degrees. 
I was pretty impressed. I can go on and on and tell you how good this cooler actually is, but more importantly, I would rather show you. So for now, let's go ahead and dive into the box contents, check out the capabilities in the NZXT software, and then we will wrap up with the comparison to the Deepcool Castle 240EX. The packaging is very similar to the Kraken M22 as well as the install guide. As we see, the biggest piece is gonna be our radiator right here. So it looks like a pretty long tube here for your cooling. Just right off the bat, I'm probably gonna say that obviously this is gonna cool better. It's got a bigger, cooler head. So far, it's looking good. We've got an eight pin, 10 pin down here for your connection for the pump. You have a micro USB here, which is a pain in the ass, let's be honest. You know, it is what it is. All right, let's set this one aside. Hands down, I love the Kraken fans, the NZXT fans, much more than almost any other fan out there. You get two brackets here that you can put over your head. One's for Intel, one is for AMD. This gives you options, which is super nice. And then of course you have your micro USB and it'll power all of your RGB or LED goodness. So. Bam. And then last but not least, we have all of your standoffs and screws here for AM4 and Intel. So yeah. Okay, thanks for watching the unboxing there. We're gonna jump right back into it and do some benchmarks, but I wanted to go over the NZXT uh, software, but I wanna see just initially how this thing plugs in to the system uh, and give you guys a little sneak peek. So, so they give you ring channel and logo channel, which is the same as you get on the Kraken M22. You can customize those two as well. Let's see if there's anything as far as cooling goes that's special. Look at that. So with the Kraken X, you get access to uh, the, the pump. So you can do silent, performance, custom, and fixed. And because I'm using performance values for my benchmark testing, I am going to use performance for the Kraken X pump. Well, I'll keep it pretty simple here. We're going to cover some of the Castle 240EX numbers and compare that to the NZXT Kraken X53. Both 240 millimeter all-in-one coolers and they both cost $129.99. So which one's better? Which would you spend your money on? This is the true breakdown. So let's start off and we'll start simple with the chrome tab test so this is just a representation here of how we mostly use our computers which is browsing the internet you're on facebook you're on google you're on twitter instagram youtube checking out my channel hit that like definitely subscribe share it with your friends that's what you're doing on chrome so i loaded up about 40 here 40 different tabs doing different things and this is what I found, Castle 240EX on the low end, we hit 41 degrees Celsius. On the high end, we hit 54, which was a little bit higher than the Kraken X53 at 36 and 52. Idle temps, definitely a lot lower on that Kraken X53. We see that lower uh, down here on the next test, which is the idle temps. The Castle 240X idles at about 34 to 43, whereas the Kraken X53 idles at 30 to 44. So a pretty, pretty good difference there. Four degree on the low end. When we move on to gaming, which is what a lot of you guys definitely want to know about is how is this going to perform for gaming? I fired up Call of Duty, one of my favorite games. So the Kraken X53, we saw the numbers there on the low end 46. With the Castle 240EX, we hit a low end of 50 and a high end of 60, which both are about three to four degrees lower for the Kraken X53. We're moving into the summer, so it definitely makes for a, a nice, cool room for me to play games at. Moving on to Fortnite, great performance from the Kraken X53, and I can say the castle's still good, but it just does not cut it in this race. 48 degrees on the low end, 56 on the high end, and again, we're seeing anywhere from five to two degrees difference between the two with the Kraken taking the lead. So let's go ahead and test out some of you CPU heavy users out there. I edit a lot of video and I wanna know how my CPU is gonna perform when I'm editing that video. So I threw in some Cinebench and a few video renders, but we'll start from the top. The Kraken X53 
definitely took over the Castle 240EX. The low temps on the Castle were 63 degrees. The low temps on the Kraken, 57, six degrees less. What that really means is I will be able to pin my CPU at 99 to 100% usage for a longer period of time because that cooler's able to keep it under that thermal throttle limit, that thermal barrier that tells the CPU, hey, you gotta slow down, you're hitting that max performance. Although we're not really getting close to that, I think it's somewhere in the 80 degree, 75 degree mark for this CPU. It definitely is concerning because if we're doing long renders, we don't even wanna touch that number. So 63 to 65 degrees for the castle and 57 to 60 degrees for the Kraken X53. Video rendering, that was Cinebench by the way, Cinebench R20, not a Premiere Pro. Uh, so going into Premiere Pro to do a video render, this was about a four to five minute 4K export. Kraken X53 at a low of 52, and the Castle 240EX at a low of 55, so a three degree separation there. And on the high end, the Kraken hit 58, which is six degrees lower than the Castle at 64. So once again, allowing us to boost that performance of the CPU from about 99 to 100% for longer periods of time. And again, just for kicks, I opened up Illustrator. Illustrator is not too heavy. You can do that on an i5 and, and have pretty good luck. So I'm not too concerned, but we did see some stable values from the Kraken. Now, the castle hit much higher. It went to 53 degrees on the low end and 59 on the high end. So huge performance gains here for the Kraken. I'm, I'm really impressed if you're a photo editor, uh, video editor, this is definitely gonna be my number one pick, the Kraken X53. I'm super impressed. And last but not least, if you're a video editor like I am and you export your video and you're sitting there and you're waiting and you're like, what can I do? My YouTube title, all of my tags and my calm, everything is set, ready to go. I just have to wait 20 minutes, 15 minutes for this thing to export. Well, this cooler has got you covered because you can pull up that illustrator start editing that thumbnail and make it a thousand percent of 1080. I think it capped me out at about 500. Just to be fair, this test did cap that vector image out. Even then, the Kraken at a low point was 54, whereas the Castle at a low point was 61 degrees. And last but not least, for anyone who's just looking for a cooler to stream your favorite videos from my channel, Accessory. Again, go ahead and subscribe, share it with your friends. Uh, if you're just looking to stream all my videos at the same time, uh, we've got you covered with the Kraken X53 as well. Not to say that the castle is not good in this area or any area, um, but it actually beat the Kraken. Uh, with a low point of 40 degrees and a high point of 52 degrees, while the Kraken was 44 degrees and a high point of 54 degrees. Well, let me go ahead and break down uh, a few things that I really liked and maybe a few things that I didn't like about this specific cooler and which one I think you should buy comparing against the Deep Cool Castle 240 and the NZXT Kraken X53. Now, you guys know I did the M22 video and I was pretty impressed. That's a great one. 20 millimeter all-in-one cooler and I would recommend it for anything under a Ryzen 7 something like an i5 not an i7 if you're going to overclock definitely not an i9 if you're going to it's capable it's capable of doing those things but will it do it well enough and for longer periods of time probably not compared to this particular cooler which brings me to the first point so the install was super easy on this cooler probably one of the easiest coolers I've installed. They've added some new gadgets to help you with that process setup. Immediately, the NZXT software knew exactly what I was setting up and it gave me control over the pump, which is kind of the second to third thing that I liked. The pump has control for performance. I can set it to silent, performance, Av regular, whatever it was, I had about three to four options to choose for performance for the pump. With the Kraken M22, I couldn't, and with the Castle 240EX, I couldn't. And at $129.99, I would rather get that capability plus the cooling capability of the Kraken NZXT X53 than the Deep Cool. I do like the style. I very much like it. It's clean, just like any Kraken product out there, NZXT product. I use their cases for a reason. I use their fans for a reason. I use their coolers for a reason. 
It's a great product and highly recommend it. It's hard to pick apart this product because there's a lot of really good things out there and it has overperformed in every area beyond my expectations. I mean, four to five degrees uh, of extra cooling for the same price is phenomenal. I thought it was gonna be neck and neck except for maybe a two to three degree separation in some scenarios. It was every scenario. Let's be honest, that's killer. That's really where I'm gonna leave it, you guys. Uh, I would highly recommend this product over the deep cool. I appreciate you watching this video. I did a full install guide previously. It's on the channel if you wanna check that out. Go check out the channel, watch that video. If you bought one of these and you're looking to install it and you just wanna know what's in it. It's a full 18 minute video. I cover start to finish and then I give some good points there at the end on troubleshooting and what I went through. So without further ado, you guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up. Thanks to everyone who's been subscribing lately. We're well on our way to a thousand subscribers here. I'm putting out content as much as I can. So thank you for watching. And until the next video, you guys, I'll catch you later.